All right, we're coming on the air here with some breaking news. I'm James Briarton in Charlotte, North Carolina. I've got Jared Smith in Charleston, South Carolina. And the reason we're uh, coming on right now to the Carolina Weather Net and all our social platforms is because we have the first forecast cone for the storm that we anticipate will become Amelda. We anticipate it is forecast to become a tropical storm and eventually even a hurricane. Uh, It's currently going by the name Potential Tropical Cyclone 9, and we'll get into what that means in just a moment. But let's show you the cone uh, because that's what you're here to see right now. And uh, we'll try to make this nice and big on the screen for you here. Uh, This just came out at the 5 o'clock hour from the National Hurricane Center on this Friday, September the 26th, 2025. You can see right now the storm system is trying to get itself a little bit better organized just north of Q. Cuba, and then we'll travel over the Bahamas on Sunday, where they do have some storm warnings out for it right now. But Jared, we're watching very closely what happens to what we anticipate will be a Melda by the time it gets into the waters off the Carolinas on Monday or Tuesday. Uh, We have lots to talk about here, but let me ask you this question right off the the bat, uh, Jared. Uh, Why is that circle so big? Well, that circle is so big because there's still a good bit of uncertainty as to where this is going to go. Now, keep in mind that the forecast cone is uh, derived from past hurricane center errors, and it means that the storm center will be within the cone about two thirds of the time. So the center of that circulation could be anywhere from Savannah, Georgia, through the Carolinas, almost out to the Outer Banks, practically Mm -hmm. there. Exactly. And those really close together black dots, the H symbolizing hurricane, the S symbolizing storm, the one for Tuesday at 2 p.m. and the one for Wednesday at 2 p.m. are are virtually on top of each other because we anticipate this thing's going to maybe slow down. It's very possible that this could slow down. This has been something that the models have been telegraphing for the past couple days, been keeping an eye on this. And again, this is still almost a shrug of the shoulders at times from some of the guidance yeah. as to far as where it's going to go. And we're going to take a look at that here in a second. But um, I, I think what this drives home is that there certainly is the potential, you know, and we're not saying that this is absolutely going to happen. This is the first track. We got a lot of, first you know, we got a lot of yeah. refinement to go, but we need to be getting ready for the potential for a lot of rain. Yep, we'll show you those rainfall totals here in just a second. Jared hit it on the head. This is the very first forecast cone for, again, what we anticipate to become Amelda. It seems statistically likely that this area of still organizing storms will form into Amelda. And the reason they're calling it potential tropical cyclone nine is because the rules, if you will, allow the National Hurricane Center to start issuing exactly this, a forecast cone, 72 hours prior to prior to arrival here uh, as a as a land threat, uh, if in fact it hasn't already met the status of becoming what you're probably used to seeing, which would be a tropical depression nine or a tropical storm Imelda or a hurricane Imelda. A lot of a lot of nuanced rules, but the, the, the real takeaway here is as of five o'clock on this Friday, we do have a forecast cone. Uh, with that, we also start getting other products from the National Hurricane Center, including this one, which shows the arrival time of potential tropical storm force winds, about 39 miles an hour. So by Monday at 8 a.m., this thing could be knocking on our door where Jared is in Charleston, South Carolina, or up and down uh, the coast. So that really helps us start to get an idea of, of when uh, this these impacts could arrive and there's still a lot of uncertainty and that is not an excuse. We're just going to walk you through the science here in a moment. I'm going to briefly flash up on the screen because it's part of the portfolio and we'll circle back to it. Uh, These here show what is anticipated to be the amount of rain that we could see. And if I scroll down or out to get us the scale back in, Oh, I'm sorry. These are the probability of tropical storm force winds. I stand corrected. My apologies on, on that. Uh, You can see it's, it's, it's fairly likely that this will reach that tropical storm status. Um, but what I wanted to show Jared, uh, before we get to, uh, some of the model runs and, and some of the rainfall totals, uh, is the description. This is like behind the scenes at the national hurricane center. Um, I just took a power hit. Can you hear my, I just took a power hit. You took a power hit. That was you. Okay. I was like, somebody's UPS is beeping. And I thought it was me because I thought I had a flash of light here at the same time. So uh, always good folks to have a universal power supply uh, because we didn't lose Jared there during that lightning hit. Um, This is the behind the scenes. This is what the forecasters at the National Hurricane Center are thinking. If you ever wanted to be like, what is it that they are thinking about? Why are they making the decisions that they are thinking? Uh, This is exactly that. So the storm system has moved uh, about eight knots, not very 
very fast during the past 12 to 24 hours, slowly moving. Uh, expected uh, This motion is expected to continue uh, as is forecast to move northward, blah, 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 blah. But what I found interesting uh, in some of this discussion, Jared, uh, was the talk of all of the variables that are still out there. Strengthening is likely to be slow in the short term due to the current land interaction. Because remember when I sh- we showed it to you, it's kind of near Cuba and some of the other islands. Uh, however, gradual intensification seems like a good bet this weekend as we go into Saturday and Sunday. And on Monday, while the storm system tracks over the Gulf Stream, once it gets over those warm waters with less interaction from land, the National Hurricane Center intensity forecast lies close to the hurricane regional and consensus models and shows the system reaching hurricane strength early next week. It should be emphasized that the long range, like once we get past Monday, intensity forecast depends largely on where the system is and the degree of land interaction at those periods. Because what this is going to go on to talk about, Jared, is, and we can see it visualized. Uh, I know you've taken a look at these. These are just two different computer models. There's uh, hundreds of them, folks. Um, But the reason we want to show you this is because the NAM come 8 p.m. on Monday, 0Z Tuesday is 8 p.m. on Monday, shows right here where all these numbers and letters are appearing on the screen. Future Amelda is still off the Florida coast. Yeah, and uh, Umberto's out there, and we'll talk more about that in a second. But if we switch this over to another model, GFS, at the same time period, at 8 p.m. Uh, here on Monday night, it's it's over Jared in Charleston. And so we've got this huge discrepancy that has to do with whether or not Umberto's going to slingshot it around with the Fujiwara effect. But also, Jared, we've got this cold front right? That's marching through the Carolinas as we speak right now. We've got on and off rain. Uh, we've got clouds here where I am in the, in the Piedmont. And depending on how fast the storm moves and depending on how fast this cold front moves, this cold front is going to kind of butt right up against it when it gets to the coast, right? So is this kind of the million dollar question, depending on how fast this trough or this cold front moves is going to depend on exactly where a meld is allowed or able to go? I think it's going to have something to do with, you know, if it cuts off, um, and where it cuts off is going to be a big factor in where it funnels into. Again, Humberto, we were talking about that. Certainly is on the stronger side of where uh, where it is thinking. It's a major as of this evening, and so it's forecast to become Category 4. So a fairly strong Humberto could exert more influence over the system. Right. Again, there's a, there's a ton of variables there. We do have the we, we do have the low that's setting up, and and again, it's just that that you know all these small positioning things and of course the strength of Imelda and and what that ends up looking like. Now if Humberto can impart some shear upon Imelda, uh, that would be ideal to at least right. keep it, you know, keep the wind threat down a little bit. But again, if as the dis, you know the discussion talks about this, you know, depending on where Humberto goes, if Humberto has too much influence, steering currents can break down. And that's where we get that stall scenario that is really not what we want the stall the stall scenario is really bad and and you know we see that a little bit when we look at the forecast cone because not only is this circle kind of the typical oh when we get five days out there's margin error is huge but it's also the fact that when the the storm is not moving the cone stacks up on itself yeah um, and it looks like can, an ice cream cone it does look like an ice cream cone and i'm going to use levi cowwin's tropical tidbits website here to show some of the model the the spaghetti models right all the different things that the different computers think it could do and I mean, look at this, right? We look into this one right here. We've got some that come inland in South Carolina. We have some that go over Georgia. We have some that go straight out to sea after essentially making a 90 degree turn off the coast of, say, Charleston. And we could ask a whole different ensemble of commuter models what it thinks it's going to do. And we have that's almost that same split. And it's frustrating because everyone wants to know what this storm's going to do. And I think the short answer is just prepare as if it's coming and have the supplies on hand. Yeah, absolutely. I think I think the thing that folks, you know, up and down the South and North Carolina coast, because again, where this thing stalls out, again, the, the point on the map is just a small point on the map. The effects of this are going to expand, you know, several hundred miles from the center. Models have been painting a whole lot of rain at times, Yeah, uh, getting into the PD, getting into Eastern North Carolina. You hope that this doesn't drift inland um, and soaks Western North Carolina, they know a thing or two about this. They do, especially this time of year. And I know there's a lot of storm anxiety associated with that. And I do feel like it is it is our duty to say, like, this is not Helene 2.0. 
but we do need to prepare for somebody getting a lot of rain. Now, we look at the National Weather Service's forecast for the amount of rain that could fall essentially over the next week. Now, this forecast is calling for a whole lot of rain off the coast of the Carolinas in the upwards of like 10 to 15 inches kind of bullseye off the coast because they're playing kind of that stalling out near the coast. But to what you said, Jared, is that there are other computer models that are interpolating the data and thinking, well, it might stall over Columbia or it might stall over Charlotte. Uh, and that's going to bring that bullseye further inland to yeah. different places. Might not stall at all. You know, I mean, that's the, the that's, you know, that's also possible. That's the, that's, that's, that's the trick with this right now. But I mean, there definitely seems to be a, a, a you know, two really clear solutions that the models are getting onto. And there is generally more, confidence right now, unfortunately, in the Southeast, you know, the South Carolina landfall scenario. Um, so again, I think the most important thing is that, you know, we need folks to, you know, get prepared for, you know, several days, potentially wind and rain, especially if you're closer to the coast, you are, Yeah. Um, you know, a storm surge, depending on where the center ends up could be an issue for several days. We know we, uh, we saw that with Aaron, right? Because Aaron never made landfall here in the Carolinas, but in North Carolina on the Outer Banks, NC-12, they took a beating, right? Mm -hmm. Just from that offshore storm. So even if Imelda never came ashore in that scenario, you guys are still going to take that brunt along the coast. It reminds me of Dorian, because sure. as you, if you remember Dorian, now granted, Dorian was also a Cat 5 over the Bahamas. We're not going to see that from Imelda. It'd be very Correct. unlikely that we see that from Imelda. I want to be completely clear on that. And I also want to be completely clear, clear that no two storms are ever the same. But that being said, Dorian did not make landfall in South Carolina. It literally stopped and turned directly mm -hmm. off the coast. It never these made storms landfall. are big. But they're big, and we took yeah. a good hit from Dorian, as most will recall. And so, again, every storm is a little bit different, but that's why we're wanting you to prepare now. And we're sounding the alarm now. I mean, that's why a lot of us got alarmed yesterday when we saw this trend establish, because there's not a lot of time, uh, you know, going into a weekend either. So, correct. Uh, so, well, again, although although yeah. the benefit the benefit might be, you know that it's the weekend. So people, less people are going to be working. You could go grab some extra groceries, but I think this is what you were saying, right? I was getting concerned that we didn't have a cone before five o'clock today, because in my brain, I'm going, if this thing in the scenario, in the faster scenarios mm -hmm. where it gets here on Monday, as opposed to Tuesday or Wednesday, that clock is ticking down mm -hmm. for preparation. And, and something else to consider too, James, we were looking at the surface maps earlier. We have that front dangle, that front that stalled out. Well, there's a big stream of moisture associated with that upper low over the sub southern Appalachians, it's going to, we're going to have showers and thunderstorms mm -hmm. um, moving across I think some of the same areas that are going to be hit. I think it's next. raining in Charlotte right now. I mean, yeah. the saving grace, if we get, if we get a, a moderate amount of rain, our creeks and rivers and things here in the Charlotte area are very low from, from our ongoing drought conditions. So we have a little extra room to play with. Uh, 10 to 15 inches would be a lot of rain. Um, again, not Helene 2.0. Helene brought 20 to 30 inches to the mountains where we had landslides and things to talk about. I just, I, I feel the storm anxiety myself, and I'm sure others do too. Mm -hmm. All we need is love on YouTube writing, slow down, stall, and dump rain, question mark. That would be the worst case scenario is that this thing kind of parks itself someplace and brings somebody a whole lot of rain. Yeah. So that's what we'll be watching for. And yeah, absolutely. That's what we need to be getting ready for. Um, wind obviously is a secondary threat, but it is a threat. And when you get, you know, you get a lot of rain over a spot and if it's not going to move for a while, even 40 mile an hour winds can bring trees down when you saw, we saw that with Chantal this year, yes. right? That was a tropical storm, just a tropical storm and, and not a, a hurricane. Uh, but it, you know, it, it moved slowly and brought a lot of rain, um, which, which is something to keep an eye on. Okay. So what Jared and I and the rest of the Carolina weather group are going to do is we're going to have daily updates posted for you on our Carolina weather group, YouTube and social accounts. So you can stay up to date with the forecast, uh, as it's coming out, our Carolina weather net streams continuously with uh, live radar, sky cams and real time severe weather warnings. So that's a place you can also go, uh, to not only track uh, where the storm is, uh, but also some of these other rain, showers, and thunderstorms that Jared was talking about that we're going to have through the weekend. Um, and uh, we'll also be updating our audio podcast feed. So uh, we know that in the event that uh, you find yourself maybe with uh, little power or, or little internet, we always say this in any scenario, uh, we'll update our audio podcast feed because that's sometimes a little bit easier to listen to than streaming video. Do I think we're going to get into that scenario? I don't know yet, but I just I remind people that as part of the preparations, as part 
part of a way to have multiple ways to get severe weather warnings, not just us, uh, but maybe a NOAA weather radio, a TV, uh, and, and so on and so forth. Uh, this is the time to kind of just get that stuff in order. And if you go out and you buy a lot of pop tarts this weekend and it turns out we don't need them, then those things last forever and you'll have them for the next time. So, um, all right, well, uh, that's going to do it for now. We're, uh, going to wrap this one up again. It's Friday right now, September the 26th. Uh, we get updates from the national hurricane center four times a day. Uh, so please uh, subscribe, uh, make sure you're getting the, the current information, make sure you're getting the information from a verifiable source. You can always, this is most important. You can always go to hurricanes.gov and verify the official National Weather Service forecast for yourself, whether you want to double check what we're saying or double check what anyone else who is posting information to social media is saying. You can empower yourself by fact checking that information at hurricanes.gov to get the forecast from the National Hurricane Center straight from the horse's mouth. And James, and before we go, I want to emphasize that, you know, that official National Hurricane Center forecast is what you need to be basing your decision making on. Models are a piece of the forecast puzzle. Yep. They are not the whole enchilada. And so you don't want to go in with just a bit, bits and pieces of information. Rely on these guys. Their track error is, you know, it, the cone shrank this year because they did a good, better job of hurricane tracking, you know, of, 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 yep. of forecasting the track. So again, hurricanes.gov, use this forecast. And they're not shy about telling you what they know and what they don't know. You could read their discussion. Some of it's scientific. Some of it goes over my head. But they will outline what they know and what they don't know. They're not shy about it. And they'll talk about all the different variables. They're looking at the computer models, but they're also talking to themselves and other human forecasters. And they're taking the best of what computers have and with the best of what humans have, and they're putting it together as one forecast. Uh, that's going to do it from this update from the Carolina Weather Group on this Friday. Jared, good to see you. Uh, to everyone at home, stay safe, stay calm. Go ahead, get some storm supplies together. It never hurts. We'll be back with updates.